you know, we may be living in the country, but we're not stupid. <laughs> you know, we know what human bodies look like, and these were not human. Are we alone in the universe? Man has asked that question since time began. With us today on Perspectives is Julie Schuster. Julie Schuster is the executive director of the Roswell UFO Museum and the daughter of Walter Hott. In 1947, working for the local airbase, Walter Hott put out an article to the newspaper. They had captured a flying disc. Hello, Julie, and welcome to the show. Good morning. And good afternoon to you. Julie, the article ran about 63 years ago in the Roswell newspaper. Please take us back to what happened that day. I think it was July the 2nd, 1947. Following a major thunderstorm, the ranch foreman for the Foster Ranch went out to check fences and livestock and make sure everything was where it was supposed to be. And during his horseback ride across the parts of the ranch, he came across a large area of debris, metal-like material that he had never seen before. He gathered some of it up and a few days later brought it into the local sheriff's office here in Roswell, and the sheriff, George Wilcox, thought it might be military. They called the base. The base sent Major Jess Marcel to look at the debris. He went back out to the ranch with Mac and another officer from the base. And at that point, basically, it became a military site as they cleaned up every bit of debris that they could find, brought it back to Roswell, flew it to Fort Worth, up to Wright-Patterson in Ohio. And on July 8th, the press release was issued that basically said, we have in our possession a flying saucer. On July 9th, General Roger Ramey of higher headquarters in Fort Worth said, no, it was a weather balloon. And that started the best-known and best-documented UFO cover-up. Well, Julie, you said that they found debris. Can you tell us more about the debris? Was it an intact disc or semi-intact disc? There were big and little parts. A smashed pile of spacecraft garbage. What I saw, I couldn't believe. There was so much of it. It was scattered over such a vast area. So we proceeded to pick up as much of the debris as we could, loaded in the wagon. What substance did it seem to be made of? It has become known as uh, memory material. It was similar to aluminum foil. It was silvery. You crumpled it up like you would do tinfoil. You opened your hand up. It kind of flowed back to its original shape. Wow. Isn't that something? What else can you tell us about the debris that was captured? There were I-beams, like support beams, that had writing on them that Jeff Jr. and Jeff Sr. had never seen before. A lot of people tend to forget this was a strategic air command base. These people knew what was going on in the world. They worked on the latest and greatest aircraft, the latest and greatest technology. So to be confused by something that was balsa wood and maybe aluminum foil, no. Some of the research is now coming across that two disks collided during that storm. Part of it landed here and part of it landed over by Socorro. Like any other aircraft collision or aircraft crash, you have some parts that may be very intact and some parts that are little pieces. Um, My father at one point said it was somewhere between 22 and 24 feet in diameter. Did your father actually see the debris or or, or parts of the disc? Yes, sir. I felt it and it did feel it and I studied it some. Well, it was a gray lustrous metal that uh, resembled aluminum. It was uh, lighter in weight and much stiffer. In 2003, my father put together or signed an affidavit saying that he did see the debris. I know there is some controversy that it was written by someone else and your father was asked to sign it. You know, it's amazing in the UFO field how you can always nitpick something to death and find something wrong with it. Yes, there is controversy. I went into my father's office, and we went line by line. Is your name Walter Hot? Is your address? Every sentence of that affidavit, I would ask my father, is there something that's wrong? He knew exactly what he was doing. 
okay. Were there things about that event that he kept quiet towards the end, or was he always open about seeing the debris of, on this crash in 1947? He never publicly came out and said he saw the debris until that affidavit. Growing up, we never heard of it. Wow, okay. Because once it became classified, Dad came home and said, we don't talk about it, it's a done deal. When your father was overruled and he said it was a weather balloon, did the story change over time or did they always maintain it was a weather balloon? No, there's like five different explanations. You know, it's a flying saucer, a weather balloon, a project mogul balloon, a radar target, an anthropomorphic dummy. So the more explanations you come up with something changing it, the more controversy there is and the more likelihood it is not true. You know, if it was a flying saucer, leave it alone. It's going to be a flying saucer. Do you completely believe that they captured a flying disc, Julie Schuster? Yes, I do. Is it your feeling that this was from an extraterrestrial spacecraft? Oh, yes. Well, there's no question in my mind about that. And there's been some reports that there was dead and or live aliens on that craft taken captive by the military. Is there any truth to that? Yes, sir. There is truth to it. Um, you know, my father saw bodies under a tarp, um, and that is in his affidavit. There were, there were a lot of good military and good civilians who said there were bodies. Um, my understanding, I believe, was about five, and there were four. Two were dead at the scene. One died when the military got there, and one was still alive. So we, we know that there were bodies there's been theory that they were progeria victims that were being dropped out of aircraft to see how they managed with parachutes. You know, we may be living in the country, but we're not stupid. <laughs> you know, we know what human bodies look like, and these were not human. And my father always, he would not talk about things a lot, said it was not of this earth. There's billions and billions and billions of stars and planets in our universe. It's endless. Uh, is it illogical to think that there are other civilizations? And if there are, we are searching for others. Probably they're searching searching for us. Ha- has your uh, religious or spiritual beliefs changed because of these events that happened in Roswell, New Mexico? Actually, my uh, religious beliefs have gotten stronger. We would be very arrogant to think that when you look up and you see all those stars or all those lights, that there's not something out there that we would be really special if we were it in that great expanse. We don't have a franchise on the universe. Yeah. I, if you're interested in my thinking on that matter, why well, I, I don't think we have a franchise on being the only good guys and or bad guys either, for that matter, in the universe. People are no longer as scared of the subject. That's a very good thing. Julia Schuster, why do you believe, if it is a cover-up, why the cover-up is going on now in its 63rd year? Well, in the beginning, the theory was panic. There could be panic if this all came out. I mean, what the hell are we dealing with here? Is it friendly? Is it hostile? That's why this information has to be so carefully controlled. You know, coming out of World War II, going into the Cold War, all of the things going on, that people were not quite ready for or the government felt not quite ready. So let's cover it up. They didn't want to panic like happened after Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. Why cover it up now? Okay, here is proof positive Roswell happened. First thing that would happen is 50% of the people or more are going to say, you know, that's another cover-up. Or they come out and say, no, it didn't happen. No matter what is said now, people aren't going to believe the answer. What about military implications, like it landed in the United States? Might they look at it as there is some type of advantage to keep it a secret and use whatever they may have learned for the protection of the United States or dominance in the world? You know, your guess is as good as anybody's, but, you know, I I just kind of read it that, you know, we've made these explanations. We have said, case closed, it didn't happen. It was this, this, this. And in our society now, whichever way they come out, somebody's going to go to court and say, what else are you lying? What else are you hiding? And it could be a very, very, very detrimental to our entire way of life, our government, everything. I mean, with all the lawyers involved, it could be just devastating. 
what do you wish should happen, Julie? If you had the levers of control and government in the state, would you want everything um, thrown open to the media and the public about what may have happened that day in, in 1947? You know, there's people that are a whole lot smarter than I am that I would leave that to. There's a, always so many different angles to things um, that, you know, yes, oh, yeah, we're going to tell everything, but there may be something that we really don't need to know. You know, somebody, some big movie star that really is a little green person underneath that costume. Hmm. I don't want to know that. I'd rather keep, a, keep that fantasy alive that they're a real person. There, there's reports, Julie, that uh, scientists, by uh, reverse engineering over the years, have had scientific uh, breakthroughs that have benefited our planet. Well, I've heard, that, you know, the theories that Velcro, computers, all of that came from reverse engineering. Look at our technology before 1947 and how slow, and then look at what we've done in 63 years versus what happened prior to that. Mm-hmm. Quickly, we have learned things. We started getting into the computer area. Aircraft were improved. Look at the appliances, the microwave, convection ovens, telephones improved. It didn't all come out at once, but it's come out very quickly since then. Did your father mention, were there photographs taken of the crash, the debris, the bodies, the weather balloons, whatever, in 1947? My father never mentioned that. However, yes, there were photos taken. And unfortunately, they were stolen out of, out of this person's business. Uh, what would it take to uh, get, ac- <laughs> Dream on, get access to these photos? The Freedom of Information Act? How would one do it? There are so many Freedom of Information Act requests out there, and nothing has been forthcoming. We have just a few minutes left, Julie. Have you ever wondered why a craft or a sighting has not happened uh, on the front lawn of the White House or um, on Fifth Avenue in New York City as opposed to Roswell, New Mexico or a crop circle in the Northwest? Well, Roswell, remember at that time, and, and still we have a lot of military activity around here. And so, you know, they may have been coming. You have the atomic bomb testing. Um, so they're coming and maybe looking and saying, what, how stupid are you all being to create this stuff? But, you know, we're checking it out. If I was somebody from anywhere else, if I was me, would I land on the front lawn of the White House? No. Or in downtown New York? No. I'd find some place where I wasn't going to get shot at right away. Hmm. Because as people say that advanced civilizations are visiting Earth, uh, warning us, uh, with our, our military industrial complex, with our environmental catastrophes, that we're going down the wrong route, and that uh, some say that we're being warned, and that these advanced civilizations are there to help us. Now, if that if that is all true, uh, it'd make a bigger impact uh, coming down to the House of Commons in Ottawa or or in Washington. You know, it might, but it might also be just that somebody in a town of right around fifty thousand people goes, "Wait a minute, we're being stupid." And we start at the grassroots and work our way up. Then we tell our legislators and all of them, you know, it may be just going the other way. Instead of making a big splash on the front of the Wall Street Journal, you know, you make a little splash on the Roswell Daily Record. Julie Schuster is the executive director of the Roswell UFO Museum in Roswell, New Mexico. Julie, what is the website for your museum? RoswellUFOMuseum.com Julie, thanks so much for coming on the show today. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your stories, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you for having me, and you all have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Pentagon confirmed in 2020 that they are authentic recordings made by Navy personnel. The federal government is being increasingly open about its decades-long investigation of UFOs, and officials admit now they've seen many things they don't understand. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain. Aliens exist and President Trump knows about it. We have had people saying that they've seen things. Uh, I'm not a believer, but, you know, I have an open mind, Tucker. Today, for the first time since the 1960s, members of the House Intelligence Subcommittee and top Pentagon officials discussing the topic of UFOs. Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. I'm Barry Shane, Bob, and thank you for watching. 
This interview, which you've just heard with Julie Schuster, was done in 2012. Perhaps it is even more relevant today with recent sightings of unidentified craft all around the world and NASA and the U.S. Air Force admit they're real and they don't know where they come from. To hear more of Barry Shainbaum and Perspectives, go into Spotify and search Barry Shainbaum Perspectives.